Today we're going to work on a landscape painting. This is an image from uh, and a scene in Italy where I was last September with some students painting. And one of the reasons I chose this is because I wanted to show you that there are different ways of interpreting all the green. So I'm going to come up with some different variations that break up the the large areas of green which can get a little bit overwhelming. So I've got my painting sketched out and as always I start right in with the subject matter which I would consider the focal point to be the barn. And I'm going in with the shadow side. So as you can see in the photo, there's a lot of small detail. And I don't want to just disregard that because I think it adds to the the charm to see that there's a lot of you know, small sheds and other types of small structures. Uh, those really can be considered little opportunities to add more color in to a scene that's especially has a lot of green in it. But all those little areas of detail and structure, I see them as just a way of putting some more color into an otherwise overwhelmingly green type of a, uh, an image. So I'm putting in my trees now, some of the background trees. And even within the areas that are green, I try to use different colors to make up those greens. Sometimes I see students put out one pile of green that comes from one tube, say it's Viridian, and in order to make lighter green they just add white, and then in order to make a darker green they might add a dark blue or a black, but there's so many different types of green that you can actually add lots of different colors into them. Um, in the background that I'm working on now, I, I have somewhat grayed down the green. I put a little bit of red in it, I think a little bit of uh, alizarin, and that gives it a very different green than what you see on the trees in the right that's next to the barn. So all this communicates some distance and the fact that the trees on the left are further away so they're slightly grayed out. But the point is that you can you can really explore and play with a lot of different greens. If you look around in nature you'll notice that uh, there's so many different variations on green colors. There's, there's greens that are more brown, more red, more blue, more yellow. So always feel free to try a lot of different greens. You'll also notice, if you look at the photo, that there really isn't a light effect on that barn. But with that being the focal point, I just decided to give it a little more drama with the light and create a spot on it as if the light was hitting that area strongly.
I'm using a one inch brush here So the area that's to the left of the barn has a lot of little areas that are really pretty unremarkable color-wise or uh, by any other standards. So again, I'm considering those as little opportunities to add some color. There's some purples and some light blues and even though that's not exactly the way they look in the photograph, or the way they looked in life, uh, it's really up to me to make the painting work as opposed to simply um, transcribing exactly what what's in the photograph. So again, you'll notice that I'm just modifying the various shades of green just to create more interest. And there's some really pretty geometric patterns that I'm, they're, they're not really there um, from the photograph, but again, it's really my job as an artist to make a painting that works as opposed to simply copying exactly what I see. So I'm taking a lot of liberty with color and I'm also taking a lot of liberty with breaking up what would be an otherwise fairly flat space. I'm trying to create a sense of dimension And I have my darker colors at the front. As we're looking at a vista, say if we're driving in our car and we see uh, mountains and hills in the background, they will always appear lighter and fainter and bluer and grayer as they recede into the background. So the colors that seem to come forward are the warmer tones. They're warmer and darker. And as they recede into the background, they get lighter and bluer. So those are techniques that you can use to create distance in your painting. I'm kind of creating the colors as I go along here, but I know that my goal is to create a sense of distance, so I'm getting a little bit bluer and lighter as the landscape uh, recedes. My most saturated and vibrant colors are up front. They get a little bit grayer as they go towards the background.
And even my road, which has a little bit of a lavender tint to it, that will also get lighter as it goes back. So one of the reasons I chose this photo is because the road is a, um, I guess, an element in the image that leads your eye right to the focal point. So now I'm going in again with more greens to the left of the road. You can see I've used uh, the warmth of the orange mixed in with the green, which is closer to us than as that little patch of land recedes. And it looks like there's a little dip in the landscape there where that stripe is. And I see that as an opportunity to create a little bit of contrast. So I'm lightening up the top of the barn. And now I'm going in with my sky color, and although the sky was blue, I decided to take a, liberty, a little bit of liberty with that as well. So I'm making it kind of a light ochre color. I think that gives the impression of late afternoon light, kind of a hazy look. And I'm also carving in around the trees to give them a more interesting shape. And softening the edge. And I really try to put down my strokes and leave them alone. So when I put in the tree shapes, they really didn't have much definition to them. So in this stage of, of putting in the background around them, that's when I go in and I carve a little bit of character so that they don't look so uniform or, um, you know, I just try to make the shapes a little more interesting. And I, I do that with the edge of my brush, even though it's a pretty large brush, relatively speaking. 
uh, I get quite a bit of detail. I think you can get a lot of control as long as you use the edges of your brush and you have a brush that tapers in so you get a nice kind of a fine line where you need it. So I can get in in between the branches where the little sky holes are. And now I'm just reinstating the barn a little bit. That orange, I felt that orange was a little bit bright. I'm giving a little bit of contrast with some windows and a few other colors. And basically, these are just little nuances to just to give it a little more interest color wise. And it's a navy blue, even though there's really no navy blue in the picture. So that's what you would call artistic license. Some little dots and dashes. All in the interest of well, making it more interesting to look at and leading to the focal point. So now I've got my little liner brush. That's when I need really, really small lines. So I'm putting in the telephone pole now. And there's the second telephone pole. Try to do that in one stroke because I want it to look smooth. And I'm putting the light effect on it because the light would be hitting one plane much more strongly than it would be hitting the side that is not facing the sun. And I added a couple of touches of pink and coral for no other reason than I think it needs it. And that's really what an artist does, is rather than paint exactly what they see, you paint whatever is going to make it work. Because in the end, the viewer is not going to see the photo, or they're not going to be standing there while you're painting. They're only going to see the final painting, and that's really what you're working towards. So I put that stripe in because I felt like it needed it, that darker green stripe on the left. And all the little touches I'm putting in now, I'm really not looking at the photograph. I'm just doing what I think the painting needs. So even though this painting was really mostly green, I think that I've added in a lot of color, 
where it didn't exist before, and I think that makes it a lot more interesting. And that's what you can do, too. You don't have to go with exactly what's in front of you. So let's see what you do, and have fun with your artistic license.